Radio Rahim here with Bob Arum. We're at the first uh, press tour stop of the Manny Pacquiao Timothy Bradley fight. There's been so much speculation, obviously, before this fight about who Manny Pacquiao was going to select. First, talk to me about when Manny slipped you that note and you said that there was one name on there and he had decided on his opponent. Uh, what you thought when you saw Timothy Bradley's name on that card? Well, I was glad for Timothy and I was glad because this fight is going to be a really good competitive fight. This is a fans kind of fight. Timothy uh, has great hand speed, he throws a lot of punches, and this should be a very, very crowd-pleasing fight. Now, Bob, there's no question that as pleasing as this fight may be, and as competitive as I think it might be, nobody wants to see this fight more than the Mayweather-Pacquiao fight. You told me that the last thing that would needed to be decided, the only thing that stood in the way was Floyd Mayweather's court date and his possible prison sentence. That was back at the Margarito fight. Obviously, that had cleared up. And explain to us why that fight didn't happen, if that were the only obstacle. Because at the last minute, Floyd being Floyd, uh, threw a curveball saying that he wanted better than 50-50. Well, for two and a half years, we've all, we've one thing we settled on, it would be a 50-50 fight. So, you know, I don't know where it goes from here. Uh, there's no way that you would ever consider, if Panny Pacquiao came to you and said he would be willing to take a less than 50 split, would you authorize a deal like that? No, and he wouldn't come to say that. Remember, he wants to be president of his country. And to be president of the country, you have to be a stand-up person and not be pushed around. And the only conceivable justification that Mayweather uses for wanting better than a 50-50 is that Manny is a foreigner and he's an American. Well, that's not going to go. That's not going to go when Manny is president of the Philippines. It's not going to go now. Uh, Bob, let me ask you this. When... Floyd, I mean, when um, Manny Pacquiao was speaking yesterday, and this is from press reports, I didn't see it myself, but press reports say that he discussed possibly retiring after this fight, one more fight at the most, uh, based on his need to rededicate himself to his Christian faith. Is that true, first of all? And if so, what are your thoughts on that? Well, that's a Manny Pacquiao decision. Whenever he decides to retire, he'll retire. Uh, I don't know what his faith has to do with it. There's so many great athletes uh, like Tim Tebow and Jeremy Lin uh, who are very strong Christians, have a lot of faith, and aren't giving up their sport. But that's a personal decision and it's up to Manny. Would you try to talk him out of that? Would you try to uh, persuade him to fight a little bit longer, maybe make that, that Mayweather fight if possible? If he, Manny is going to retire, that's a personal decision, and I would never even think to talk him out of it. Let me turn your attention to something entirely different, which would be the unfair, I think, by most accounts, judging that has gone on in boxing for many decades. You can't pin it on one promoter or, or one promotion, but we can all agree, I think, that boxing has a serious problem with judges making decisions that damage the sport and turn hearts of fans against the sport. First of all, is there anything that you feel like with your power of position in this sport that you could do to rectify that situation? Well, you've got to educate the judges. I think that that's probably the problem. You know, it's it, boxing judging is subjective. Sometimes you have a judge who has personal problems and is not thinking about what he's watching. That happens not only in boxing, but in any sport that has subjective judging, diving, ice dancing, all kinds of sports. and. Uh, we have seen lately some decisions that seem incomprehensible. The only thing you can do to help it, only to help it, is the better education of judges. But there has to be some repercussion, right? Like some of these guys, they make these decisions and then they end up judging again. Now I know promoters are always competitive. Every, you know, there's personal problems in between all of these relationships. But could you see a, a, a need in banding together with the Oscar De La Hoya, with Gary Shaw, with the other promoters in this in this sport to somehow put together something that could stop 
this kind of judging, these kind of unfair decisions? It's all up to the regulators. It is up to the commissions. Once promoters get involved in who should judge and who shouldn't be allowed to judge, then you're on a very slippery slope. The commissions have to take actions. The Texas Commission should ban the guy who, th that uh, fight, the Donaire Do Do fight, who scored the fight against Donaire. I don't know what fight he was watching. That was like ludicrous. But that's up to the commission. It's not up to a promoter to take actions. And last question, Bob. If Manny Pacquiao were to retire and leave the sport of boxing entirely, who do you think could fill that void on your roster? Who would you who could step up and take the place, if not the place of Manny Pacquiao, take the attention of the fans and keep this sport exciting and keep the attention on it? Oh, probably Chavez Jr. Chavez Jr. All right. Thank you, Bob. Good luck with the promotion. Radio Rahim with Bob Arum.